Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're having a great day. I am having an awesome day. It's absolutely beautiful morning today. It's supposed to be raining, but it's not. And I am so glad because I was a little concerned coming to Louisiana and uh, with the weather, but it's absolutely gorgeous. I love this time of year. So we're gonna talk today about owning a business or a side hustle and how to let it die or thrive, right? How to let it live or die on its own. And I think this is very important because I was at the Red Pill talking with so many amazing subscribers. You guys were there. Roderick, I hope I see that YouTube channel soon. Just a little side note. If you guys don't know who Roderick is, he's got an awesome Amazon uh, uh, business and I can't wait to see this guy go to work. All right, so I think it's very important to talk about this because we're in a moment where we're about to see declining uh, sales. I believe that we are moving into deflation I talked about this in my, uh, my video entitled The Dollar Whippet Theory back in June, I believe, where I said we were gonna go from a time of inflation into deflation and then in into hyperinflation. If you wanna see that, it's, it's a ways back. We'll, we'll, I'll try and link that if I can remember. In 2008, everybody knew there was a collapse happening. We saw the, the, the closing of Bear Stearns, uh, Countrywide, so many other businesses, I think Washington Mutual, all these banks were closing down. It was chaos, people were being laid off. You saw videos of people walking out of the off, their offices with their boxes of stuff from their desks, lined up almost like a, uh, a perp walk, it was horrible. Then we saw Lehman Brothers and everybody knew, wow, this is it, we have arrived. The sad thing is they didn't realize that that crash started in mid 2005. And that was with the uh, great understanding um, for few people, but then it, the masses understood what a mortgage backed security was. I bring that up because of this. From mid 2005, I had started selling off my real estate, closing our um, real estate flipping business and investing business. And I was out there warning people. And obviously from 2005, mid 2005, 2008, it's a long period of time. So you get a lot of people that think you're a total nut job, right? But in that time, everybody was being handed in 2007, the spring, I believe, uh, stimulus checks. They're thinking this is great because now I can go buy myself a new big screen TV, which I can guarantee you none of you have to this day. But everything was collapsing, right? Well, the thing is that everybody was owning businesses and I know a lot of people that own businesses and what they were doing was the sales started to decline. It started to shrink because we are going into a collapse. So everybody's gut feeling was, ooh, you know, prices are rising in gas and all kinds of different things and I need to start protecting myself. So what's the first thing I do? I stop going on as many vacations. I stop going and buying luxury items like hot tubs, things like that. And I don't go to the tanning salon, not me. I'm always this white. The point being is that what happened is all of these businesses started to take a hit, but it was slowly, 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 and then all at once. Just like many uh, very famous people have said, and I believe, was it Mark Twain? I don't remember. Uh, no, no. He wrote Old Man in the Sea. Do me a favor, put his name in the comment section below. He said, I went broke slowly, 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 and then all at once. I'm pretty sure I got it right. So what happened was these businesses or side hustles would start take, um, having these declining sales, but they still had expenses. They had employees, uh, overhead like rent, electricity, things like that, and inventory uh, costs. And what they did was they kept it, kept it going so they would slowly start taking money out of their personal lives or personal budgets to keep that business afloat. What they didn't see was the great big picture, the grand scheme of it all. And I want to warn people, as we start to see these slowly declining sales, it's very important. And ironically, a lot of businesses are already doing it, but they're being forced to doing it because a lot of businesses have less employees because they just can't get employees, right? But it's not, they don't understand that this is ironically a good thing. Right now, there's a lot of business owners that are working extra hours because they're having to pick up the slack because they don't have the employees and what they don't realize is that's actually a good thing for you right now because what is happening is these, and it might seem like you are just struggling, it's super long hours, it's true. But the facts are, the sales today are not equal to what your sales were before this all started. Those are facts around the country. Yes, you might see a line outside of people that you never saw before, it's because you're only so much, you can only handle so many people, but if you look at the amount of sales that you're able to grab and hold on to, it's less than before all this started. Okay, so what's happening is um, I want people to understand, and I, I give this concept to a lot of uh, business owners I know, that as you're pulling money out of your company when it's doing well, you need to realize how dangerous it could be as you start to shove capital back into that company. And you have to ask, stop and ask yourself, why is this happening? Why are we uh, having to put money back in? Is the business starting to fail? And remember that when a business fails, 
that money that you're shoving back in there may never come back. And I think it's very, very important sometimes to take a deep breath, really pull back and evaluate, quite possibly maybe even bring in a consultant because an outside set of eyes can really give you a lot of insight to what you've been missing because you've been head down in your business. And I really want to stress that because as we move into a deflationary spiral, which has already started, it started in lumber, in uh, uh, real estate, we're gonna see more and more things pop off. I believe next you're gonna see electronics and non-durable, uh, not durable, um, you know, uh, items we don't really need a lot, you know, like high-end stereos, things like that, luxury items, those things are gonna start to slow down. We're gonna start seeing, I believe in this, uh, not only because it's a seasonality thing, but it's an economics thing. We're gonna start to see uh, vacation spending fall off a cliff, I really believe, because people just don't have the money. They're having to pay for food and fuel, just like I cited in March would be the case in the beginning of fall, okay? So I said, people will care less about uh, the cost of lumber and building a deck or adding a ha uh, room addition on their home because they care more about the cost of fuel and food, all right? So we're gonna start seeing that more and more. So if you have a business or a side hustle, Start to look at opportunities and that opportunity is as you pull cash out, what are you taking that money and doing? Are you blowing it or are you doing good things with it? Are you paying off debt or are you uh, taking that money and making it work for you? Remember the book, The Richest Man from Babylon. If you haven't read it, go read it. It's very important to learn how to take the money you have or the resources you have and allow them to make you more money. All right, guys. With that being said, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, as we get deeper and deeper into the winter, uh, it is going to gonna get interesting, guys. And I want you guys to be prepared, not scared. All right, guys, that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.